back. You're watching a post-budget analysis this budget day in South Africa. Earlier in the day, we were told or it was reported that investors would reward the minister if he demonstrated the ability to manage South Africa's deficit somewhat and that we'd see a few more capital flows coming into South Africa's capital markets. We head over now to Alexei Kontogianis, who's a manager of debt ca uh, capital markets at Standard Bank. Almost got tongue-tied there with your name, Alexi. Nice to have you. Thanks very much for your time. Thank How have you. the bond markets responded? Because we're told that the budget deficit is widening almost 5.3% in uh, 2012. Hi there, yes. Um, I mean, look, the, the movement on the market at this stage has been relatively muted. Um, Broadly speaking, there hasn't been that much of a change to in terms of the net borrowing requirement going forward. Um, grafted, uh, granted, the budget deficit is about half a, ba half a percent higher on the RTE at about 3.8%, um, but we're coming off a 6.6% deficit last year, um, and despite the borrowing numbers, uh, the deficit being relatively high, the borrowing numbers are relatively stable at about 150-odd billion rand, um, add another billion... Um, another 100 odd billion mm. rand a year from the SOEs. So on a weekly basis, they did indicate that they won't be introducing any new instruments into the market. Um, they will keep their auction sizes relatively mm. co consistent. So indicatively about two to 2.1 billion mm. a week on the Tuesday auction, and then potentially five to 600 million every two weeks on the ILB auctions. Um, but what we expect to see is them focusing their issuance on the, the longer end of the curve. So about a quarter of that in the seven to 10 year, mm. uh, a third year probably, then 10 to 20 year or 19 mm. year, and then maybe another quarter longer than that. So really from a, from a broad picture, no real changes, um, relatively conservative budget, um, I think he, he made all the right noises right. Um, that what the bond investors were looking for. Um, so I think generally it will be well taken. Okay, but let's fast forward because we do know that we've seen a bit of a sell-off recently. Investors uh, no longer see uh, good yield in emerging markets. Certainly that was the case in South Africa. And if we've got a wider deficit, is it likely to push up the price of South African bonds and also push up the yield curve slightly higher? I think what, we, what we're likely to see is a little bit of gradual steepening in the yield curve. So yes, the long end picking up slightly. Um, but that said, the local investors seem to have good appetite. Um, despite yesterday's volatility we saw in emerging markets, bonds sold off about 10 points. Um, we still had the government's auction going off relatively well. They auctioned 10 and 15 year notes and they cleared one basis point through the market. So there will be a gradual increase. The minister did acknowledge an increase in debt service costs from about... 66 billion uh, for this fiscal year, down from previous estimates of about 71 billion, rising up to about 105 billion. But relative to GDP, our debt service costs are still staying mm. very, very moderate. Um, and even if you add, I mean, our borrowings make up about 40% of GDP at the peak. Compare that to developed market peers and other emerging market peers, we're still way below the norm. Right. And we certainly have got a lot of upside room uh, to, go, to go if they need to. Um, but I think they're going to maintain a very cautious approach um, to the funding requirements going forward and just really manage the issuance um, a, little bit, a little bit more proactively. Okay, thanks so much for your time. Alexi Contagianis, the manager of debt capital markets at Standard Bank. Kevin Lings, your views on this one. Uh, the deficit going up 0.7% since the medium term budget last year. We're also told that we're going to see a lot more government spending. I think his words were, in good times we save, in challenging times we've got to spend. Mm. Look, I think what the budget deficit is telling you is that government's under pressure, so they're under pressure to raise revenue. The tax base is very small, as we know, and we're not creating jobs. So that's the starting point. And then he's got a whole lot of demands, as we've seen, on the expenditure side, and that means his deficit remains high. Where I think he'll please the bond market is that while the deficit is high in the shorter term, he's forecasting over the next three years that he'll ultimately get the deficit down. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, moment, the bond market will give him that credit. In other words, it will believe that that's where his intention lies. But clearly the pressure is going to grow and he may not ultimately get there. We also are aware that... Um, while our debt ratios are all favorable compared with the developed world, right. they're all moving in the wrong direction now. From here on out, we're going to see debt servicing right. costs right, debt levels right. So it's, 
it's a less favorable financial position than what government was in literally two or three years ago. And it's reflecting the reality of the sovereign right. economy. This is what happens when you can't create jobs mm -hmm. and you don't have a growing tax base and you've got all these demands. Gentlemen, let's discuss policy here. He did reiterate several times that the policy uh, here is a counter-cyclical one. I've explained why. But when we've got GDP or debt to GDP at about 39% by the year 2014, is that not something to worry about? Not really. I mean, Japan is at 200% and the United <laughs> States is at 80%. We're not a drunk, insolvent country like Ireland or, you know, Greece, that sort of thing. Neither are we, you know, kind of entirely bulletproof. But as you heard from the fellow from Standard Bank, it's a smoothly operating machine. The demand for the bonds is there. The issuance by Treasury is modest and manageable. So I think it's, 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 you know, this is not a Mickey Mouse economy. Everything is proceeding according to plan. We know we've got higher spending requirements at the moment, but, you know, we can manage that. It's more a question of how do we succeed as a nation and get the ultimate uh, economic right. fortunes improving all around. All right, we'll continue discussing policy in a second. Let's head over now to Stephen Gunyan standing by at Parliament. Thanks, Laura. So, well, I'm joined now by I'm joined by Opa Magashili. He's the commissioner for SARSA. Opa, the, the budget deficit reducing a little bit slower than expected. It seems that corporate tax collections haven't been quite as strong as you would have expected towards the end of last year. Do you see that changing as we enter 2011? Yes, we definitely hope they will be changing. Usually, as you know, the corporate income tax lags uh, after the recession. You know, companies that were operating in the recession, you know, reported uh, profit losses or losses, yeah, let, me, let me put it this way. And it takes about another six months after that year end for them to be able to report and, and experience, you know, the, the pickup in the economy. So I think we probably overestimated a little bit that the lag would take shorter than the 18 months, but it took more than around uh, two months. 20 months, you know, longer than what we expected. But we expect, you know, the numbers for the next fiscal year, the 2011-2012, to become much more uh, buoyant and we should be able to recover some of the losses that we're experiencing in this fiscal year on the corporate income tax. Now, we are expecting that, uh, that budget deficit to come down to 3.8% within the next three years, so that would really assume that we are going to see collections growing quite nicely. And you're also looking at new sources of collections, such as that gambling tax. Well, the gambling tax, yes, is a new source of, uh, of collection, but we should always remember uh, gambling taxes are income taxes. It's not a new uh, source. It's just that now we are treating you know, gambling takings as, uh, as, as income tax, uh, like any other person that has an income from any other thing. So we expect it to show on the uh, income tax, on the personal income tax side. A little bit of an increase, but not too much because none of us have done the numbers as yet. Because uh, the reason for the gambling tax is not necessarily to increase the tax, uh, you know, the tax take. It's really around saying there are other social impacts that gambling has more than just uh, an, an increase in, in, the, in the, you know, it takes and degrades, you know, uh, household uh, income. And, and, and also, you know, make sure that people ignore their own other responsibilities and take uh, chances on, 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 on gaming and, uh, and gambling. Now, SARS has been one of the big success stories uh, over the past decade, really as that tax net widens. You have a voluntary disclosure program at the moment, so trying to get more tax in that way. We're also looking at various employment opportunities and job creation. How do you see that tax widening? Can we continue to see the success that we have over the past decade? Yes, uh, we, we had a tax contraction, a tax revenue contraction last year, if you remember, uh, of about 4.2%. And year on year, as the minister has said, we are anticipating that the tax growth year on year will be around 12.3%. And that is because of not only you know, economic activity, but there's also enforcement activity around compliance that are SaaS efforts, you know, that we have done. I mean, we have seen real, in real term growth uh, from the you know, economic growth of 3% that is anticipated this year, or 3.2% that is anticipated this year. We've seen a 12.3% growth in tax takings. So all, all the difference between 12 and 3 is real growth that has been, that has been uh, affected by the economy and the compliance efforts from from the South African Revenue Service. So thanks very uh, thanks very much for your time today, Opa. Thank you. It's Opa Magashili. He's the commissioner from the South African Revenue Services. Back to you, Lerato.
Okay, thanks so much for that perspective there. Obviously, tax collection from corporates uh, declined after the recession. Some gambling taxes there. I won't be playing Russian roulette tonight. We'll